Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in part two video where I go over details of the software integration of the Ruko U11 Mini drone. Let's get to it. This is part two of my discussion of the Ruko U11 Mini drone. I've been flying it now for several weeks. I'm liking this a lot. It's my first drone, so everything is kind of new for me. But I want to uh, discuss my experiences. Also, for the initial look at the drone, up here is a link to part one. There'll be a link in the description. This is the drone. This is the remote controller, a nice clean interface. Use your smartphone as a screen um, to control what's going on. Keep in mind this drone is designed to be under 250 grams. Mine weighs 238 grams, I believe, with a battery. That means, <clears throat> per the FAA, it does not have to be registered, and you do not need a remote ID to fly this drone. So um, that's a good feature. This drone lists for about uh, $280, given to me by the folks at Ruko for this review. But what I want to point out, at this price point, I think you get a lot for your money. The camera is very good. It flies well. It's got the basic software package that we're going to talk about in this video. The two things that you don't have with this entry-level drone is the camera here does not gimbal. It's not mounted on a gimbal. So if the drone is bouncing around in the air, the picture will bounce a little bit. Doesn't matter if there's still pictures for your video, probably on the calmer wind days will be better, but you don't have a gimbal. The other thing this drone does not have is obstacle avoidance. So if you are near trees or obstacles, it doesn't know they're there unless you're flying it. So what that leads to when you're doing the initial test flights, because you'll go pretty quickly from a manual control when you push one of the intelligent flight modes, it goes back to a different set of menus with altitudes, um, radiuses, and so forth. It can kind of zoom in unexpected places until you understand how all these things work. So the learning point to make sure that you're in a nice open area when you're doing your test flights with this drone. So one thing, I'm a long time RC model airplane pilot, and one of the things I know from flying models, piloting aircraft and so forth, is you have to fly the airplane. So you're always kind of looking at the airplane and making sure you're flying airspeed, things of that nature. With the drones, it's just simply not the case. As all you drone pilots know, the thing flies itself. And so as a matter of fact, what you do with a controller is you basically position the drone where you want. These are all spring-loaded to the center position. And then you reposition it uh, either on its um, vertical axis or laterally because the primary objective of the drone is to take pictures. And so um, it, it, it's just a little bit of a learning point for me, whereas I have this thing in the air that I'm responsible for, yet I'm spending an awful lot of time on the screen figuring out what I want to do with the software. It's just the way that the, the game is played with these drones. So to use your smartphone um, to control the drone, you just download the free U11 app. Uh, there's um, quick read codes, et cetera, to do that. Everything's controlled through that app. And the other thing is there's a quite good instruction manual here, what they call a user manual. And it's 62 pages. It has a lot of information on it. Some of the information is not going to make sense until you fly it a couple of times and understand what the drone's doing. Also, you'll have to read kind of carefully because they'll use different terms for different things. For example, on the controller here, I normally would call these control sticks. Uh, but what happens, the manual uses two other terms, a joystick, which is fair enough. But then they also call them a rocker switch. When you are adjusting the parameters for like circle around flight, they're a rocker, strip, rocker switch, not a control switch. So I, I kind of get the nuance, but that's not obvious. The other thing I do want to point in, if you can take a look at this uh, switch right here, you can see there's CINE, Normal, and Sport. There's just a switch that does that. So CINE, I have no idea what that means. Uh, normal and Sport, I kind of have an idea. In the user manual, they call that low, medium, high. I understand that. It just gives greater um, authority to the motors to operate at a higher speed. So for example, Per the instruction manual, if you're going to fly on a windy day, you want to be in the high speed all the way to the right mode. You can just react a little bit more quickly uh, to what the drone is doing. So don't be intimidated by the user manual. It's got a lot of good information, but it's going to make sense after you have a, flu a few test flights under your belt. So there's a trend tremendous amount of software integrated for the drone to fly, as you can imagine. 
and use the GPS to know where it is in the world and, and to do various things like follow you orbit around a point. So it's very important you have a GPS lock. Uh, but the other thing is there's kind of two types of software. Some are what I call push button software. The other ones are through the menu that I'll, I'll show in this video. So for example, if you push this button, it's a return to home button. You just push this once, the drone will automatically return to a takeoff spot that it knows through GPS and land. So this might be used a little bit. This is the on off switch. There are menus in the smartphone, again, that we'll go over a little bit um, in a moment here called the intelligent flight menus. Uh, and these are some things that you'll do from time to time. I'm gonna look at my notes to make sure I get it right. The five types of intelligent flight menu are root rules, a better way to express that is a waypoint navigation where you put waypoints on a map, the drone will fly to those points. It does that very well. The next is GPS follow. What that means is the drone will follow you wherever the trans or wherever the controller is through GPS magic. So if you're walking along, the drone will trail behind you tracking your controller. The third one is point of interest. That's where you'll define a center point. The drone will go around it and look at that central point. And then the two others are GES quick shot. I'm pretty sure GES means gesture. And that's where you do some hand signals to take a picture. Um, I'm still working on that as well as image follow. For the image of the gestures, this camera has to recognize contrast. I've been flying on very sunny days, kind of uniform background. In a third part, it, once I figure out the uh, gestures of the image, I'll describe that in further detail. But for now, it'll be the root rules, the GPS follow, and the point of interest. Now, let's talk a little bit about the camera because that's one of the main reasons you get the drone. So the camera is located right here and it's soft mounted, but it, it, that's the camera. It's a very good camera, a beautiful color picture, it's good definition. There are three ways um, that this drone records the uh, pictures that you take. The first one is one of these little micro cards and it goes into the side slot right here. And then you'll get some sort of reader to read that on your computer. The other two methods are when you take a picture with a drone through the U11 app, that uh, image, video or still is stored on the picture library of the app. So you have it on there. And the other thing that I do with smartphones and some advanced Android phones, you can record the screen with your phone. So the benefit of recording a screen, you can see all the GPS and information on that, like we'll show you here. If you use the app or the memory card to store the pictures, it's just a clean picture without any of the uh, GPS signals, battery strength on there. So they kind of both uh, work well. Another thing, if you have an Apple phone and uh, iOS uh, phone, it's super easy through the AirDrop feature to wirelessly transfer your pictures from your phone to your computer. It's a lifesaver. Uh, you just take your phone, it uses Bluetooth to identify your phone, the computer, it's transmitted over Wi-Fi, an incredibly easy way to transfer files to do video, video, video editing on your computer. As I mentioned all along, there's, there's an awful lot of software in this drone. It's just amazing, really, when you look at it. And one of the things the drone has to have is a good GPS signal to fly. I was test flying the other day. In our neighborhood, there's a pretty thick tree leaf uh, coverage over the road. And I was on the sidewalk to avoid any traffic and um, could not get a GPS lock. And so there's no flying. I did go into the middle of the road. It was clear, picked up the GPS. We flew from there. So again, just a, a learning point on that. I'd like to take a moment and show you, discuss the Ruko 65 3-in-1 charger. It was sent to me by the folks at Ruko the other day. They asked me to take a look at it. I'm happy to do so. <clears throat> I have two other reviews of Ruko products, the R111 Remote ID and their uh, U11 Mini Drone. Links will be in the description. I've been very impressed with the Yuko products. Uh, I am an Apple user. This video is being filmed with an iPhone. Um, all the editing is done on my Mac. Opening this 65W that came in the mail is like opening an Apple product. Everything's just packaged very nicely. A lot of care and thought is in it. What the 65W is, is a three-in-one charger. This is where you plug it in the outlet. It folds down. And here are the charge receptacles. There is a single USB-A port and two USB-C ports. So it's a three-in-one charger. You can charge one or all three at the same time. It uses advanced gallium nitride technology. 
to manage power, overheat, <clears throat> and circuit protections all in here. And it's a slim fitting, so you can fit it into a strip charger between uh, other things you might have plugged in. And it's a nice little thing to consider for your um, computer work and your travel, just this three-in-one uh, charger for uh, USB-A and USB-C ports. Let's take a look at some of the screens. So this is the ready-to-fly screen of the app. I'm sitting at a bench at the field and I'm holding this in my hand. That's the picture you see as I'm just holding it in my hand and pointing it around. You notice I have the intelligent flight modes to the left. Here are the examples here. GPS follow, point of interest, route rules. We'll go over that in more detail later on in the video. There's also menus that will come up all the time. You want to confirm this. Slide here is just trying to double check you. In this case, I'm under a roof. It just wants to verify that I am ready to fly. I'm not, so I just get rid of those screens. Again, you can see it's a very good picture. Again, the drone is simply sitting on a picnic table. Here I am holding it up and I'm going to take a picture. I just push the picture button to the right. So you see with the picture, this will be stored on the um, Ruko uh, app, uh, the U11 uh, app. Now I hit the video, push the red button. You can see the second countdown. I'm holding the drone by my hand and just taking a video image that when I'm done, I push the red button and that's stored on the photo library of, of the app. We'll take a look at that. That's the bottom button, the little picture there. And there are the photos uh, that are stored on the app, as well as the videos. And you can download those to your main computer if you wish. Now the upper right-hand corner, those three little dots, these are some other menus. This is the beginner mode, flight distance. It's good to review this just so you know what the drone thinks it's going to do when it's in an autopilot mode. The second one down is settings, uh, units, I'm using inch, mile per hour, water mark, uh, voice prompt, and so forth. Then finally, some tracking information. So going back to the flight app, you can see we're ready to take off at this time. And um, we're in the air, and you can see it's a very nice picture. The little image below the triangle is where the drone is looking with that green um, uh, imagery in front of it. And the drone's just doing a 360 at our flying field. And you can see where north is on the compass. And just another view uh, of the drone. Notice there is no gimbals on the picture, so it bounces around a little bit depending on the wind. However, it's a very good picture quality. And here we are coming in for a landing. Again, the pre-flight screen, we're ready to fly. You can see below the, uh, the height and the uh, distance away in feet and the change of velocity. Now we're going up. That's me. You look down at the screen to make various changes. You can adjust the tilt of the camera. Very easy to do. And you can see that all displayed on your smartphone. I'm taking a picture in the air like I demonstrated on the ground. It takes a little time to receive it. And that is uh, going into the camera library. Let's take a look now at route rules or waypoint navigation using GPS. So here's our screen. Uh, we go to the ready to fly portion. Everything looks good. Batteries are charged up. <clears throat> We're on the uh, desk and here are the intelligent flight menus. You can see GPS follow. We're going to do the routes. This is the map that we call up. This is a just a regular standard map. There's also satellite imagery. This is a picture of our field. It's an old satellite photo, not real time, but you can zoom in and move that around. Notice the bottom left is a picture of what the camera is seeing as we're picking out our waypoints. The um, red dot is location of the transmitter, and the green uh, uh, triangle is the drone itself. We go back to the uh, picture view. And now through the waypoint um, uh, air thing, we're going ahead and we're hitting the various points that we want our waypoints to be, and that is all set. Now what I'm doing now is in the, low, in the picture in the lower left, I've sped it up. I'm walking out to our takeoff location, which is going to be point number three. So it's going to fly from where it takes off to point one, two, and three. You can see the grass lower left. Now we're airborne. We take it off, you can see we're about five, six feet right about now. I hit the go, it wants to confirm waypoint flight, and now it's on autopilot for the preset parameters to fly the waypoints. See, we're going up to 40 feet or so over that starting point. Now we're up about 50 feet, and 
There the triangle is of the drone flying. You can see the picture in the lower left. It's the point number one. It'll turn uh, to the left. Again, at a height of 50 feet. And this is all done automatically. It's turning to point number two. It's flying to point number two now. Again, you can see what the drone is seeing. The picture at the lower left, it gets to point two. It'll turn to the left again and uh, return to point three, the end of its waypoint navigation. There's a picture of the flying field. You can see how it matches up to the satellite photo. Gets to point number three. And now we're coming in for a landing as it comes down to touch down in the grass. We'll discuss now GPS follow where the drone will follow the controller through GPS. We're ready to fly and we'll check the intelligent flight menus looking for GPS follow. Again, the tips come up on the software to make sure that you consent to what it's going to do. It's on the um, picnic bench. It will go ahead and start a takeoff to position the drone to follow us. But remember, it's following the uh, controller, the transmitter. It's not an image. It's just following wherever I am holding that transmitter. So I'm getting in front of it. You can see me in the camera. We'll go ahead and select the intelligent menu. And we're going to do GPS follow. Uh, some tips here, slide to start. And now the drone is using GPS to follow me or, or more accurately follow the transmitter that I'm holding and will follow me along. Doesn't matter if I, uh, if it can't see me, if there's some coverage of a, of a, a branch or something like that, it's simply following the GPS location of the uh, controller. And while it's doing this, you can maneuver it, adjust the camera tilt, and so forth. We'll discuss now a point of interest. Do you set a central point? The drone will fly around that point. So again, we come to the pre-flight screen. And we're all set, ready to fly. No calibration needed for this. We're on the Flying. bench. We'll go ahead and take off. And there I am flying the drone. We have it at the location and we're going to uh, select point of interest. The parameters can be set using the right rocker switch or control stick. And then it just, you can see the upper left, it start to go around. And this is the view out of the drone as it's performing that flight. And next we'll have a view from the ground of what the drone looks like as it's doing this uh, set of flight parameters. Thank you for joining me in this video. This is part two with a little bit further discussion of the software, the U11 Mini Drone. Uh, thank you for joining me. And um, for part three, I'll, I'll keep it on this channel. I look forward to seeing you then.